In the last module, we looked at the velocity and acceleration kinematics of a single link whose motion is constrained by a revolute joint. In this module, we will use the results of the last module to do the velocity and acceleration analysis of a four bar linkage. In velocity analysis, the problem can be formally stated as follows. Given the link lengths, the angles theta 2, theta 3, and theta 4, that is the position of the mechanism, and the input angular velocity omega 2, find omega 3, which is the angular velocity of the coupler, and omega 4, which is the angular velocity of the link 4. Note that for doing velocity analysis, we assume that the position is known. That is, we have performed position analysis first. Recall the loop closure equations that we had written down for doing position analysis. The vector R2 is the vector O2A, R3 is the vector AB, R1 is the vector O2O4, and R4 is the vector O4B. We have R2 plus R3 equals to R1 plus R4 or R2 plus R3 minus R4 minus R1 equal to 0. Now we have seen before that R2 is a e to the power of j theta 2, where a is the length of the link O2a, R3 is b e to the power of j theta 3, b is the length of the link ab, R4 is c e to the power of j theta 4, where c is the length of the link O4b, and R1 is d e to the power of j theta 1, where d is the length of the fixed link. Theta 2 is the angle of the input link, theta 3 is the angle that the coupler makes with the x-axis, and theta 4 is the angle that the link 4 makes with the x-axis. Theta 1 is usually a constant, and in this picture, theta 1 is 0. Since this equation has to hold for all values of theta 2, theta 3, and theta 4, therefore the time derivative of this equation, or ddt of the left-hand side, is also 0. On the right-hand side, you will get ddt of 0, which is also 0. Now first note that here theta 1 is constant and d is constant. So if I do d dt of this expression, I'll get 0 because it's a constant expression. Now these expressions here, a e to the power of j theta 2, b e to the power of j theta 3, and c e to the power of j theta 4 are similar to what we had seen in the velocity kinematics of the single link. So if we do d dt of a e to the power of j theta 2. a is a constant, so we'll get a d dt of e to the power of j theta 2 is equal to a d d theta of e to the power of j theta 2 times d theta 2 dt by chain rule. Now d theta 2 dt is the angular velocity omega 2. So we have a omega 2 j e to the power of j theta 2. And this is what is written here. Similarly, d dt of b e to the power of j theta 3 will be b e to the power of j theta 3 times j times d theta 3 dt. And d dt of c e to the power of j theta 4 will give this term here. Now, as I said, we'll call d theta 2 dt as omega 2 d theta 3 dt as omega 3 and d theta 4 dt as omega 4. If you substitute this, we get the following equation. So what we have done here is just replace these three terms by omega 2, omega 3 and omega 4 respectively. Now before we move on to simplifying this equation here and solving for omega 3 and omega 4, let us first look at the physical meaning of this equation. The first term here is the velocity of the point A with respect to O2. The second term here is the velocity of the point B with respect to the point A. And the third term here is the velocity of the point B with respect to the point O4. And since O4 is fixed relative to O2, it is also the velocity of point B relative to O2. Now why is this true? Note that we obtained the first term by taking the time derivative of a e to the power of j theta 2, which is the position vector of the point a with respect to O2. The time derivative of this position vector 
gives me the velocity of point A with respect to O2. I could have written this as VAO2. However, as we had discussed in the last module, whenever we are considering the velocity of a point with respect to the origin of the global reference frame, we will simply drop the origin. This is just a notational convenience. Now the second term here comes from the derivative of b e to the power of j theta 3. Now b e to the power of j theta 3 is the position of point b with respect to point a in the reference frame x a y. Therefore the time derivative of b e to the power of j theta 3 gives me the velocity of point b with respect to point a. Now if you take into consideration the sum v a plus v b a that gives me the velocity of point B with respect to the origin O2. Now the last term here is obtained from the time derivative of C e to the power of j theta 4. Now C e to the power of j theta 4 is the position vector of point B with respect to O4. So if I take the time derivative of C e to the power of j theta 4, I will get the velocity of point B with respect to O4. And as I said before, O4 is fixed with respect to O2. So this also gives me the time derivative of point B with respect to O2. Now you'll see that VA plus VBA and whatever I've written as VB here, they gives me the time derivative of the position of the same point B but along two different directions. VA plus VBA gives the time derivative when you move along this direction and VB gives the time derivative when you move along this direction. So in essence, what this equation is giving you is the loop closure equation, but written at the velocity level. Let us now see how to solve this loop closure equation at the velocity level for omega 3 and omega 4. As you have seen before, we have to first expand these complex exponentials using Euler's formula. And that is what we do in the first step. We use the Euler's formula e to the power of j theta equal to cos theta plus j sine theta. So expanding e to the power of j theta 2 gives me this term. From e to the power of j theta 3 we get this term. And from e to the power of j theta 4 we get this term. Then I have to multiply out this coefficients here and equate the real and imaginary parts to 0. And I get these two equations. The first equation I obtained from the real part and the second equation I obtained from the imaginary part. To see why this is true, let's just go ahead and do this multiplication. So if you see that I have a multiplication by j at the beginning for each one of these terms, so my cost terms will all be part of my imaginary component. So I have j times a omega 2 cos theta 2, which I get from this term here, plus b omega 3 cos theta 3 which i get from this term here minus c omega 4 cos theta 4 which i get from this term here and my real term will come from the sign terms because i have j multiplied by j which gives me j square or minus 1 so i will have minus a omega 2 sin theta 2 which will come from the term here, minus b omega 3 sin theta 3, which comes from here, and plus c omega 4 sin theta 4, which comes from this term here. And the sign is plus here because I have a negative in front here, and j squared equal to minus 1 gives me one more negative term. And the product of two negative ones becomes a positive term. From here you can directly see that my second equation comes from the imaginary part and the first equation comes from the real part. Now this is a symbolic equation with lots of variables. However, although there are all these trigonometric terms in here, all of these trigonometric terms are actually constants because I know theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4. The only unknowns here are omega 3 and omega 4. A, B, C are known because I have already designed the mechanisms and they are the link lengths of my mechanism. 
Theta 2, Theta 3 and Theta 4 are known means I have already solved the position kinematics for the mechanism. And this is always true for velocity kinematics. Before we do velocity kinematics, we have to solve position kinematics. So the angles are all known. So these two equations are indeed two linear equations in two unknowns, omega 3 and omega 4. Now at this point, you can just put in numbers and solve for omega 3 and omega 4. However, we are going to solve the system of equations symbolically because that will give us an insight. So if we solve these two system of equations symbolically for omega 3 and omega 4, we get the following two formulas. I will discuss in the next slide how we get these two formulas in detail, but at this point, I want you to note the denominator of each one of these expressions. You see that when theta 3 equal to theta 4, the denominator becomes zero. And so omega 3 and omega 4 becomes infinite. Or essentially, you do not have a solution to this system of equations. So when theta 3 equal to theta 4, which physically means when the coupler and the output link or the link 4 is collinear, then the velocity kinematics equations blow up. Now you can recall that theta 3 minus theta 4, the absolute value was also the transmission angle. And we had said before that that angle going to zero is bad. We had made that comment from a force perspective. Here you see another perspective that is from the velocity perspective, it is also bad when theta 3 goes to theta 4. So when theta 3 equal to theta 4, we say that the mechanism is at a singular configuration and singularity analysis is a very important part of analyzing mechanisms. I will not talk more about singularity analysis right now. However, we will return to this topic in a later lecture. Let us now see how to obtain the expressions for omega 3 and omega 4 from these two equations. So what I will do is show the derivation of the first expression for omega 3. The derivation for omega 4 will be analogous. So these are the two equations we had in the last slide. And as I stated, these are two linear equations in two unknowns, omega 3 and omega 4. To solve the system of equations, the first step that you have to do is eliminate one of the variables. I will eliminate omega 4 here. I can do that by multiplying the first equation by cos theta 4 and the second equation by sine theta 4 and then adding the two. So if I multiply the first equation by cos theta 4, I get minus a omega 2 s 2 c 4. I will use an abbreviation here where instead of sine theta 2, I will just write s 2 and instead of cos theta 2, I will write c 2. Similarly, for sine theta 3, I'll write S3, cos theta 3, I'll write C3, and same for theta 4. So this becomes minus A omega 2 S2 C4 minus B omega 3 S3 C4 plus A omega 2 C2 S4 plus B omega 3 C3 s4 is equal to 0. So to repeat, what I have done is multiplied the first equation by cos theta 4, the second equation by sine theta 4, and added the two equations. So now look at these two terms. What I have here is a omega 2 sine theta 4 cos theta 2 minus sine theta 2 cos theta 4. And from these two terms, if I take them to the right hand side, what I have is B omega 3 sine theta 3 cos theta 4 minus cos theta 3 sine theta 4. This is sine of theta 4 minus theta 2. And this is sine of theta 3 minus theta 4. Therefore, omega 3 is equal to a omega 2 by b sine of theta 4 minus theta 2 divided by sine of theta 3 minus theta 4. In some books, 
you will see this expression written as sine of theta 2 minus theta 4 divided by sine of theta 4 minus theta 3 and there will be omega 2 by b here. However, you should note that these two expressions are identical because sine of x is the same as negative of sine of minus x. So I could write sine of theta 4 minus theta 2 is minus sine of theta 2 minus theta 4 and sine of theta 3 minus theta 4 as minus sine of theta 4 minus theta 3. The negative signs will cancel and I will get this expression. The expression for omega 4 can be derived in a similar fashion. In that case, what you have to do is multiply the first equation by cos theta 3 and the second equation by sine theta 3 and add up to eliminate omega 3. And I leave it to you as an exercise to fill in the steps.